The bassoon solo is so famous. You know, every, every bassoonist who auditions has to know that solo cold now, of course. It's in the page one in all the excerpt books, apparently, you know. And, and so it's very high, and the fingerings are all fork fingerings. You need to move one finger up, and the next one but next to it's going down. And it's up in an area where the reed isn't responding very well either. And uh, it sounds, you know, e today it's well played. It's kind of smooth. Bassoonists have learned how to smooth it out. But um, Stravinsky didn't like it smooth, apparently, because he came to Eastman Conservatory in the fall of uh, 62 when he was 80 and Howard Hansen had organized the Stravinsky Fest to recognize his 80th birthday. And Howard uh, told this story, I think I got this maybe, I don't know whether I heard it from Bob Freeman, somebody at Eastman, that Howard personally rehearsed all eight bassoonists, coaching them so that when they auditioned for Stravinsky, they would at least have gotten his input. So when Stravinsky got out of the cab from the airport, he walked right into Kilburn Hall and went down the basement with Hanson, and uh, there were the eight bassoonists warming up in practice rooms. And he, they didn't know he was outside, but he went by each room and kind of listened a little bit. Somewhat like, by the way, what happened here. When Messiaen came here, students began to realize he was wandering around the building and everybody started playing his music and leaving their door open. And he came in to many people. Um, Ligeti had that experience here as well, and so did Berio. Um, but what happened with uh, Hansen and Stravinsky was this. They got to the end of the hall, and Stravinsky turned to Hansen and said, well, Howard, no good. And Hansen said, what? I personally coached all of them. We worked very hard. This means everything to us. How can you say it's no good? He said, there's several things that are wrong. Um, he quoted the first bassoonist who ever tried it, who came up to him and said, this is awful. This can't be played well. Stravinsky, tell me what's wrong. It'll be out of tune. Some of the notes will crack. We may lose the legato, and the fingerings may be a lot, little sloppy, and it's going to sound awkward and gross. Stravinsky is supposed to have said, good. And so that's what he wanted, apparently. And he said to Hansen this famous quote, look, if I were to write it today, I would write it a major third higher. <laughs> so you can get what he was after there, was to, uh, to test the limit of an instrument. But he had this uncanny ability to test the limit in a way that was doable. He, he never put something down that couldn't be played. All they did was to try to stretch, and of course, uh, as the years go by, we find that young people can do these things better than their teachers can, and eventually the art of performance advances through that.